Okay, so I had also mentioned that um, in anticipation of the 6x12 album that I wanted to create some some of my own pocket pages and um, I'm going to show you some of the design options that I came up with that you can do with 6x12 and so you can see those on the screen right now and um, these are just obviously this is not an exhaustive list right but these are just some of the ones that I thought would be fun and easy to use and easy to create using my fuse tool and so I wanted to sort of walk you through that process I want to do a little fuse tutorial with you um, I'm not going to show you how I create every single one of my pocket pages um, the plan is to to show you how I use my fuse tool because I know there's some confusion about how to make it work properly and how to get smooth lines so I want to show you that and um, and then we'll bring it all together. We'll bring the album all together with the foundation pages and we'll put it all together so you can see um, what I'm starting with for my album. So um, let me grab a couple of supplies. Okay, so first off, I have my fuse tool and this has been heating up for a while. Um, my first and foremost important tip for using this is to let it heat up really long and really hot. Um, I don't know how many minutes exactly. I just plug it in and let it sit there for a while and gather up all my other stuff and make sure that it's been like, I don't know, eight or ten minutes at least. And then um, you're going to want the proper um, surface to fuse on. Now, obviously the fuse tool has a, a there's a mat available, a cutting mat available. I don't have it. Um, I don't know how I've managed to not pick one up by, by now, but they do have one, but you can use chipboard. Um, what I found you can't use is your self-healing mats. Um, your fuse tool will not like your self-healing mats. And then, of course, the fuse itself comes with this ruler. And I will tell you that I hate this ruler. Um, it just doesn't work well for me. I don't know why. Um, so I like to use my just straight metal ruler. And it also gives you a nice long edge to work with, so that if you're, so that you're not limited to, to a six-inch seam. Um, so, and then obviously you're going to want your page protectors as well. Now I've got some um, six by twelves here, and I want to just do a couple in half, and. Um, so I'm going to just show you one and how I seal that up. Now, one thing that I want to do is I need to mark where I'm going to run my seam. And um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. I'm looking to see if I have a 6x6 six six piece of paper. I don't. <laughs> of course, of course I don't. Here, let me trim this down. So I'm just going to trim this down so that I know about how big I need to make it. Okay, and, and there is a trick to this. There is a trick to cutting this so that you'll be able to slide your things in and out, right? Um, now, one thing you can do is 
you can always wait and seal the pocket once you have things to go in it. But you're gonna wanna leave you're gonna wanna leave it open so that you can put the next day's things inside it. So I'm gonna slide this in here and yes, this is absolutely a used piece of a very well loved piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna just slide this all the way in here. Okay. And so now I know where my where my seam is going to go and then above that where my cut is going to go. No, my cut is going to go first and then my seam. And um, so what I recommend doing is to cut it first and then you know where your seam needs to go. And in order to cut it, you're going to want to use your craft knife and um, let's see, I need to cut this piece down too. You're going to want to use your craft knife and we're going to use this to keep from cutting through both sides. Because obviously if you cut through both sides then you're not going to have a page protector that's going to work. <laughs> and that would not be productive. <laughs> so, throw this in here and I'm going to throw, I'm going to layer it behind this other piece. And if you have, if you have a 6x12 chipboard that you can use instead, that would be helpful as well, okay? So we've got this and we've got this. Now I need my uh, craft knife. Okay, so craft knife has been grabbed and we're ready to go. And what I'm going to do is, let me put that somewhere. It's not in my way. I'm going to just place my ruler here above the cardstock and this is where I want my cut to go and now safety first when you're using your craft knife use your metal ruler and keep your fingers to this side of the ruler <laughs> so that you don't cut yourself somehow um, also you're only going to want to go through the plastic and so you'll feel when you when you push this through the plastic you'll feel it contact with the cardstock and so when you feel it make card make that contact you know that you've gone deep enough because you don't want to go all the way through this is the tricky part <laughs> but it's actually really easy I mean because cardstock is thick enough and you'll know when you pull your ruler away, it just pops up. And then um, you keep that capped. And then you'll be able to see, once you pull this out, you'll be able to see your, your nice cut there. And your top pocket is right here. Okay? And that worked out really well. Now I'm going to pull this out because we don't need that in there anymore. Although I know you really like my my grungy old cardstock. And this just needs a little tiny trim here in the corner. I don't recommend this by the way. <laughs> okay. A little trim there in the corner so I can get this back out. And that's okay, you know, if, it, if that fits snug, that's okay. It means you did something right. And so now we're going to set about doing our seam. And what I like to do is, now that we've made our cut, I like to place the ruler on the new pocket portion and face that way. Um, I'm probably just a little bit neurotic. I don't know. Um, but I like to see where the cut is and to know that my line is 
consistent with the cut. And so here's my trick with using the fuse. Um, of course, it's really heated now, so it's ready to go. And I find that these tips can be really temperamental sometimes. Sometimes they want to go forward and sometimes they just want to go backwards. Some days they don't want to do either way. <laughs> I don't know. But I work best when I pull it towards me. And um, so that's how I use this. Um, you may find that you're able to make a smooth line going forward. But, you know, try, try it either way. If you can't quite get it to work the way you want it to, try it just pulling it towards you. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to line it up on my ruler before I start on the page protector. Um, I want to make sure that I have it that, that I have it straight up and down and making contact with the page. And you're just going to pull it across the page protector. You don't want to go too fast because it needs time to heat and you don't want to go too slow because if you go too slow it will melt your page protector. But I'm going to go across it twice and the the little round part it will find the little divots and it'll make a nice smooth seam for you. Okay? And then that should be good. It is. There's a little tiny spot that didn't quite get finished, but I have a secret for that. Yeah, it definitely it's sealed, but it's not very strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do it on the back side. Um, I'm just, I've had it plugged in for a while and so I'm wondering if it's timing out. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and run this seam again on the back side. You don't have to do this. You don't have to run a seam on the back side, um, but you can if you feel like it's not grabbed all the way. So just run that back again. I'm going to go a little bit slower this time. There's where it's acting up and not wanting to keep rolling. So let me see if it will go forward. There we go. There. I think that did it. And so now it should be it should be well sealed by now. And then you can see that that's a pretty straight a pretty straight seam, pretty consistent. None of them are going to be perfect, right? Because you're not a machine, you're human. So yeah, that's our pocket page and we're ready. Our our pocket page is ready to go and obviously you know you are only limited by your imagination for what you create and what what kind of combinations you fuse with your tool so anyway I just wanted to clarify what my process was for that because I'm going to do about 15 of these for my um, album and so I wanted you to know what that looks like in my process. Alright, we're going to put all this away and then we'll move forward with the rest of the album. Okay, so I don't have the album quite done yet. It's still drying. It's still working on some, some stuff before I um, reveal that to you. But I wanted to go ahead and talk to you about what I did with my page protectors. And so one of the things that Allie Edwards has repeatedly stressed in this process um, that is actually really good advice and that I have incorporated into my plan for my page protectors, um, that is to leave yourself options but also to make some of the design decisions ahead of time so that on 
during the month of December you're not having to to make decisions about what size photos am I going to use yada 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 and one of the ways that she one of the strategies that she uses is to alternate her page protectors and so um, you saw me where I showed some of the options that I had drawn out for what kind of page protectors I wanted to use and so I have these all together um, and I also have the 6x12s that we just made and so I have the um, a little sequin pocket because that's how it's going to open and I have a 3x4 okay and I have a 4x4 four four, another 4x4 four four. and then I have cut down some of the 12x12 12 12 page protectors and so this is a 3x3 three three divided and then it turns into 6x12 once you cut it down so that's a couple of those and those are just options for me um, in case I want to incorporate those as the month of December rolls along, right? Because even though I've arranged these like this, I'm still going to leave myself the ability to change my mind on day five. If I want to do a three by three on day five, then I can put that in there and that's fine. So um, this is how I have alternated my system and I'm going to let me pull out this little white cardstock so you can see. All right, this is a full, this is intended to be my opening page. And so on the first day, I plan to do a full 6x12. Okay, and then the next one is all 3x4s. Okay, the next one is our design A with a 4x6. Two four by sixes and two three by fours. This one is a four by six and four three by fours. And then all three by fours again. And so it's just going to alternate like that through the whole album. And what this does is, oh, here's um, here's one with three four by sixes. And so what this does is it makes the design decisions already laid out for me, right? So I know when I come to day 10, I, I don't know what day I'm on, um, but when I come to day 10, this is what I have, right? And so I know sort of going into that day um, that I, I have space for four by six and four three by four photos. And then that influences how I photograph and what story I choose to take on that day. Um, and then the next day you're committed to it. And that's fine. And um, that sort of takes out some of the decision-making process so that you just already know what you're working with for that day. So that that is my little page protector plan and my extras here that I'm keeping. I also kept some of the cuts. Let's see, those are the ones that we made. These are the cut off pieces, right? Isn't that fun? So, you know, those are available to use too if I decide. Um, so definitely, you know, room for using the cutoff pieces. Hang on to those because um, they're a good option to use too. All right, so in the next segment, I will bring all this together with album page protectors, and then we'll get started on actually creating some of the um, foundation pages. We go. So now that's all done. And I've got that all cleaned up. And it's ready for the pages themselves. And so I'm going to just pull 
pull these off and slide them in. Now I have them in an order and I'm just sort of doing an alternating pattern. Um, that one is the design F that's been cut in half. That one is design A. This is the 6x12. And then design A. And this is one of the ones, actually this is um, just a four by, three four by sixes. Design A, cut in half. Design F. Design A. Design F. Three four by sixes. Design A. Design. This is design A, but I've divided it up into six three by fours. Design F. Design A. Six three by fours. Six by twelve. And then I think these are a couple of just miscellaneous ones. This is um, three by threes. So that's fun for embellishments, but it is a little wider than the other ones. So I might I might end up not using it. Um I don't know, you could just use part of it because it hangs over the edge. I might leave those off for now. Okay. Because these are just some of the bonus ones that I had prepared. This is a 4x4. Four four. Both of those. And then this is a 3x4. Right. And then this is a sequin pocket that's just going on the top. Okay, now I'm done with all that, and um, my next step, I'm gonna just actually, I've got. Some of these um, six by sixes. So I'm going to put those in the back. Now you'll notice I have I have one full size six by twelve here for the cover page. Um, that will be sort of the introduction. And then there's another one. There's another one back here for probably December twenty fourth for. Um, Christmas tree or a bokeh photograph and then I've got and these are just so that I have options right so if I change my mind in the middle of the month I can do that um, there so that's a couple of a couple more full-size ones if I want to do that. Um, and then these are just some, some of the pieces that were left over from trimming. And then my pack of full size ones. All right, so I'm gonna just set those off to the side. And then we're gonna start working on my dividers. And um, I decided this year 
that I definitely want to go back to having um, transparencies for each day or um, for every other day because what will end up happening is I will end up having um, I'm just thinking like this will be day one and this will be day two and so I want a transparency in between there and um, so let me grab a couple of those and I'm gonna um, 